disease, famine, terror. Throughout history, humankind has been on the precipice of disaster. It is 50 years ago, and the world is on the cusp of nuclear war. April 1961, the United States has a new president, John F. Kennedy, and he has been launched into a Cold War. In his first few months in office, he makes a tragic mistake. He listens to his advisors. April 15th, eight B-26 bombers backed by the CIA strafe Cuban airfields trying to knock out Fidel Castro's Air Force. They don't. A few days later, 1,400 Cuban exiles in the Bay of Pigs find themselves surrounded by the Cuban army. They have nowhere to go. They're annihilated, and the Bay of Pigs invasion has failed. John F. Kennedy says, how could I have been so stupid? The Cuban Missile Crisis has begun. It's October 14, 1962. The U.S. intelligence suspects that the Soviets are building missile bases on Cuba. In a U-2 reconnaissance plane, Major Richard Heiser takes 928 photos over San Cristobal, Western Cuba, and he cites nine missile bases being constructed. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara informs the President. Mr. President, we have a problem. The Soviets are setting up offensive weapons on Cuba. The Joint Chiefs have suggested invasion. No. The Soviets won't permit us to take out their missiles, kill a lot of Russians, and then sit back and do nothing. I think, uh, I think they're trying to provoke us into, into war. What if we set up a blockade around Cuba? No, call it a quarantine and make sure none of their weapons reach Cuba. I agree, Mr. Secretary. But first, let's make it clear to the Soviets that the United States will not tolerate uh, these provocative actions. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev is not happy. Khrushchev goes on Radio Moscow that night to address the world. President Kennedy's blockade constitutes an act of aggression, propelling humankind into the abyss of a world nuclear missile war. He was calling Kennedy's bluff. Khrushchev thought that John F. Kennedy would avoid a confrontation that he would be hesitant to get in any sort of conflict or stare down with the Soviet Union due to his failure at the Bay of Pigs. Khrushchev was wrong. At seven o'clock Eastern Daylight Time on October 22, 1962, President John F. Kennedy went on national television to address his fellow people. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. The American family gathers around the television set and they're a bit stunned. They'd been prepared for nuclear war in the 1950s, going through the duck and cover drills, diving under the desk, listening to the turtle telling them what to do, but they weren't prepared for actual nuclear war being imminent within days, within hours. A couple of days later, the State Department receives a letter that appears to be personally written by Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Mr. President, we and you are not now to pull on the ends of the rope, which you have tied the knot of war. If there is no intention to tighten the knot, then let us not only relax the forces pulling the end of the rope, let us take measures to untie the knot. We are ready for this. Just as an accord was about to be reached, the United States dropped depth charges on a Soviet submarine right along the blockade line. And also, an American reconnaissance flight strayed over the far eastern coast of the Soviet Union. Tensions began to boil to the surface. While the Russians scramble fighters, here we go. Castro, all the while, whispering in Khrushchev's ears. John F. Kennedy, his finger on the button. But then, a broadcast over Radio Moscow by Khrushchev. This is it. The Soviet government 
in addition to the previously issued instructions on the cessation of the building sites, has issued a new order on the dismantling of the site weapons and the creating and return to the Soviet Union. Kennedy immediately responds, the United States of America will respect the integrity of Cuba's borders, its sovereignty, and we pledge not to interfere in their internal affairs. The Cuban Missile Crisis was over. History will look back on the life of John F. Kennedy, developing the Peace Corps, setting the framework for civil rights, dreaming of putting a man on the moon, and his untimely death. But perhaps his greatest achievement was pulling the world back from the brink of nuclear war. And let us not forget our brothers and sisters of Russia. They too lived in fear. They too were on edge during the missiles of October. They've suffered a great deal during the 20th century. World War I, the Bolshevik Revolution, Stalin's purge and World War II. So on this 50th anniversary, let us give thanks to the peace between the United States and Russia. <laughs>